Welcome to Learning English, a daily 30-minute program from the Voice of America. I'm Jonathan Evans. And I'm Ashley Thompson. This program is aimed at English learners, so we speak a little slower and we use words and phrases especially written for people learning English. Today on the program, you will hear from Mario Ritter Jr., Katie Weaver, Jill Robbins, and Alice Bryant. Later, we will present The Romance of a Busy Broker by O. Henry on American Stories. But first, a train carrying hundreds of people derailed in Taiwan on Friday, killing at least 50 people. Officials say the train crashed into an unattended truck that had rolled down a hill onto the tracks. The National Fire Service said more than 100 people were injured in the crash, Taiwan's worst railroad disaster in more than 70 years. It said the number of deaths was likely to rise. People just fell all over each other, on top of one another, a woman who survived the crash told a local television station. It was terrifying. There were whole families there. Officials believe the train was carrying more than 400 people. Many passengers were tourists or people traveling to see family ahead of a yearly religious holiday. The train was traveling from the capital, Taipei, to the southeastern city of Taidung. Feng Weisheng is deputy director of the Taiwan Railways Administration. He told reporters the train derailed north of the eastern city of Walen after hitting the truck, which rolled onto the tracks from a nearby building site. At present, it is suspected that the vehicle wasn't braked properly and slid for around 20 meters along the site access road, Feng said. The official added that an investigation had been launched into the crash and police had questioned one person about the truck. Fire service officials showed a picture of what appeared to be wreckage of the truck beside the derailed train. Survivors described their terror as the train hit the truck and stopped. It suddenly came to a stop and then everything shook, one survivor told local television. It was all so chaotic. The crash happened as the train was entering a tunnel. Many passengers had to be led out of the tunnel to safety, railway officials said. Taiwan's mountainous east coast is popular with tourists. The railway that travels from Taipei down the coast is known for its tunnels. Taiwan's last major crash happened in 2018, when 18 people died and 175 were injured after a train derailed in the island's northeast. In 1948, 64 people were estimated to have died when a train caught fire in northern Taiwan. The World Resources Institute says the world lost 4.2 million hectares of forest land in 2020. The total area affected would be about the size of the Netherlands. The loss of forest in 2020 was a 12% increase over 2019. Climate change both causes forest loss, or deforestation, and is caused by deforestation. Scientists warn 
that climate change creates hotter and drier climates. As a result, forests are more vulnerable to fire and damaging insects. Plants are also important because they absorb carbon emissions that are blamed for causing climate change. Rod Taylor is head of WRI's forest program. He said, forests hold large amounts of carbon. Taylor said, losing them has irreversible effects on biodiversity and the climate. The International Monetary Fund estimates that the world economy shrank by 3.5% in 2020 because of the COVID-19 pandemic, but deforestation continued to increase. The WRI says this was likely because lockdowns limited government's ability to enforce laws against forest loss. People may have also moved out of cities into rural areas. However, the strongest effects of COVID-19 on forest loss are probably still to come. WRI researcher Francis Seymour said, It's likely that governments will try to restart their economies on the backs of forests. Areas near the Earth's equator lost a total of 12.2 million hectares of forest in 2020. The loss released emissions equal to 570 million cars. That is more than two times the number of cars on the road in the United States. Brazil saw the largest decrease in forests. The 1.7 million hectares lost was a 25% increase from the previous year. The decline was more than three times higher than the next highest country, the Democratic Republic of the Congo. There was some good news. Indonesia slowed its rate of deforestation by 17% in 2020. Palm oil, a vegetable oil, is a leading driver of deforestation. Last year, the price of palm oil decreased, possibly affecting deforestation in Indonesia. In addition, Experts say the Indonesian government passed laws that are preventing forest loss after damaging fires in 2015. Those rules include fire prevention measures, restrictions on new palm oil farms, and reforms aimed at reducing poverty. But experts are concerned now that the price of palm oil is starting to rise again. The next two to three years would be the real test if Indonesia can continue reducing deforestation, said Andika Putraditama, who works with WRI in Indonesia. WRI experts say that climate change is killing forests in many different ways. In Europe, hot dry weather in 2019 and 2020 led to more insect damage in Germany and the Czech Republic. Forest losses increased 200% in the two countries from 2018. In Russia, a hot spring and summer led to forest fires in Siberia. Extreme heat and drought in Australia is blamed for damaging fires there in 2019 and 2020. 
the world is stuck in a vicious cycle, Seymour said. Global warming leads to dry forests, forest fires, and insect damage. Seymour added, Nature has been whispering this risk to us for a long time, but now she is shouting. I'm Mario Ritter, Jr. Weekend, some Americans celebrate the Christian holiday of Easter. Others observe the Jewish holiday of Passover. And many are looking to the arrival of spring. Easter is when Christians celebrate the life of Jesus and what they believe was his return from the dead. For most Christians, Easter this year is on Sunday, April 4th. For Eastern Orthodox Christians, May 2nd is Orthodox Easter Sunday. You may wonder why the date for Easter changes every year. It is one of the movable feasts that change each year. In English, the word feast can mean a religious festival as well as a large dinner. We have both of these on Easter and Passover. In the early days of Christianity, leaders decided to set the date of Easter for the first Sunday following the first full moon of the spring season. It usually happens on or shortly after the vernal equinox or spring equinox. The equinox is a date when day and night are the same length. Many Christians in America attend religious services on Easter Sunday. Some of these services take place at sunrise. Children are often told stories about the Easter Bunny. It is said to hide eggs, chocolates, and other sweet treats for children to find on Easter morning. The Easter Bunny tradition probably developed from a German celebration of spring. Germans first settled in North America in the 18th century. Individual families and groups also organize Easter egg hunts for children. The best known egg hunt in America is the event called the White House Easter Egg Roll. The president and the first family usually join children in hunting for eggs, playing games, and reading stories. However, for a second year, the White House has canceled the event because of COVID-19. American Jews observe Passover around the same time as Easter. Passover began this year on the evening of Saturday, March 27th, and ends on the evening of Sunday, April 4th. Passover celebrates the Jews' escape from slavery in Egypt called the Exodus. The Jewish holy book, the Torah, tells about how Moses led the Jews to freedom. A special dinner, the Seder, begins the celebration of Passover. Jewish families get together and eat foods that represent the Exodus story. One food is matzah, a flat, crisp bread. It represents the hurry linked to the slave's escape. They did not have time to let their bread rise before baking it. Another special food on the Seder table is maror, bitter herbs. They represent the pain of slavery. One of our French fans tells VOA about an Easter tradition in France, where many Roman Catholics live. Churches in France do not ring their bells on the two days before Easter Sunday. The bells are silenced in honor of the death of Jesus. They ring again on Easter Sunday, the day Christians believe he came back to life. French children are told a story about why the bells are quiet. Parents say the bells have flown to Rome to see the Pope, the leader of the Roman Catholic Church. 
But on Sunday morning, the bells return and ring again. The Eastern Orthodox Church celebrates Easter on May 2nd this year. Orthodox Christians in America celebrate by blessing food baskets. In Greece, people color hard-boiled eggs and play a game by knocking them together. They eat lamb and party late into the night. In Japan, spring is marked with a cherry blossom festival, known as Hanami. The tradition dates back more than a thousand years. People gather under the blooming trees to eat, drink tea, celebrate, and enjoy the cherry blossoms, known as sakura in Japanese. Artists and poets celebrate the short-lived blooms as a symbol of beauty. For many countries in Central Asia and the Middle East, the beginning of spring also marks the beginning of a new year. The celebration is called Nowruz. The words No and Ruz mean New Day in Farsi. The International Day of Nowruz was on March 20th this year. During Nowruz, people visit family members and friends and exchange gifts. Iranian families set up a haft sin, a presentation of seven special items that represent spring and new beginnings. They include eggs, a live goldfish, a vegetable, and other foods. Many in India and Nepal mark the arrival of spring with the Holy Festival, also known as the Festival of Colors or Festival of Love. Holy was on Monday, March 29th this year. Many Indians ignored social distancing restrictions in the big cities of New Delhi and Mumbai. They celebrated the festival by covering each other in, you guessed it, colors. No matter what your culture or religion, it seems we all love spring. Spring weather is a welcome change for many people this year. Thanks to vaccines, families can once again meet and enjoy their movable feasts. I'm Jill Robbins. And I'm Katie Reaver. This week, we answer a question from a reader in China. Jojo writes, Good day. I would like to know the difference between have and eat and when to use them. Thanks a lot. Hello, Jojo. When talking about a specific meal or food, the verbs eat and have are often interchangeable. That means Either word can be used. Listen to an example of when to choose either word. I'm having breakfast right now. I'll see you in a little while. I'm eating breakfast right now. I'll see you in a little while. In the example, most Americans would probably use eat, but have would still sound natural. And there is no difference in meaning between the two. But the word have is used in polite or kind requests and offers that relate to food and meals. In these cases, often the eating does not take place at home. Here's an example of a kind offer from a friend. Want to have dinner at my place? I'm making grilled fish. We also use have when ordering food at a restaurant. It does not matter what kind of restaurant it is. We do not use eat. Listen to this short restaurant exchange. Good morning. What will you have? 
We will have the oatmeal. Thanks. Here is something else to consider when choosing one or the other. The verb have is transitive. That means we must always say what we ate or will eat. For instance, in the restaurant exchange, the man said they would have the oatmeal. Eat is intransitive, which means we do not have to say it. So you can say this. I'm really hungry. Let's eat. But you cannot say, I'm really hungry. Let's have. You can, however, say, I'm really hungry. Let's have pasta. And that's Ask a Teacher for this week. I'm Alice Bryant. To help protect yourself against the new coronavirus, wash your hands for 20 seconds with soap and water before you eat, after using the toilet, and after touching anything many other people touch, like a seat on a public bus. If you cannot wash your hands with soap and water, use an alcohol-based hand sanitizer that contains at least 60% alcohol. Taking these steps can help prevent not only the new coronavirus disease, but also colds, flu, and other viruses. For more information, visit the following websites. The World Health Organization at www.who.int or the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention at www.cdc.gov. The Romance of a Busy Broker Pitcher, who worked in the office of Harvey Maxwell Broker, usually allowed his face to show no feeling. This morning, he allowed his face to show interest and surprise when Mr. Maxwell entered. It was half past nine, and Mr. Maxwell was with his young lady secretary. Good morning, Pitcher, said Maxwell. He rushed to his table as if he were going to jump over it, and he began to look at the many, many letters and other papers waiting there for him. The young lady had been Maxwell's secretary for a year. She was very beautiful and very different from most other secretaries. Her hair always looked plain and simple. She did not wear chains or jewels. Her dress was gray and plain, but it fitted her very well. On her small black hat was the gold-green wing of a bird. On this morning she seemed to shine softly. Her eyes were dreaming, but bright. Her face was warmly colored and her expression was happy. Pitcher watched her. There was a question about her in his mind. She was different this morning. Instead of going straight to the room where she worked, she waited. She seemed not to know what to do. Once she went over to Maxwell's table near enough for him to see that she was there. The machine sitting at the table was no longer a man. It was a busy New York broker. What is it? Anything? asked Maxwell shortly. Papers lay like snow covering his table. His gray eyes looked at her as if she were another machine. Nothing answered the secretary, moving away with a little smile. Mr. Pitcher, she said, did Mr. Maxwell talk to you yesterday about getting another secretary? He did, Pitcher answered. He told me to get another one. Several are coming to talk to us this morning, but uh, it's now after nine and not one has appeared. I will do the work as usual, said the young lady, until someone comes to fill the place. And she went to her table. She took off the black hat with the gold-green bird wing and put it away as usual. If you have never seen a busy New York broker on a busy day, you know little about men at work. Every minute of a broker's hour is crowded, and this day was Harvey Maxwell's busy day. Beside his table stood a machine. From this came a long, narrow, endless piece of paper bringing him business news as soon as it happened— Men began to come into the office and speak to him. Some were happy, some were not. Some were in a hurry. Some were full of anger. Boys ran in and out with letters for him to read and answer at once. Pitcher's face now showed that he was alive. The other men who worked in the office jumped around like sailors during a storm. And there were storms in the business world, fearful storms. Every storm was felt in the broker's office. Maxwell moved his chair against the wall. 
Now he was like a dancer. He jumped from the machine to his table to the door and back again. In the middle of all this, he slowly realized that something had come near him. There was golden hair. There was a very large amount of it, high on a head. On top of the hair was a big hat covered with bird's wings. There was a long silver chain hanging from a neck until it nearly touched the floor. And among all these things, there was a young lady. Pitcher was beside her to explain. Lady for that job is secretary, said Pitcher. Maxwell turned half around with his hands full of letters and paper from the machine. What job? he asked. Job as secretary, Pitcher said again. You told me yesterday to have someone sent here this morning. Are you losing your mind, Pitcher? said Maxwell. Why should I tell you anything like that? Miss Leslie is a perfect secretary. She can keep the job as long as she wants it. To the young lady, he said, There is no job here. And to Pitcher, he added this order. Tell them not to send any more, and don't bring any more in here to see me. The silver chain left the office, hitting chairs and tables with anger as it went. Pitcher said to another man in the office that Maxwell was more forgetful every day. The rush of business grew wilder and faster. Maxwell was working like some fine, strong machine. He was working as fast as he could. He never had to stop to think. He was never wrong. He was always ready to decide and to act. He worked as a clock works. This was the world of business. It was not a human world, nor the world of nature. When the dinner hour was near, things grew quieter. Maxwell stood by his table with his hands full of papers and his hair hanging over his face. His window was open, for it was the time of the year when the weather was beginning to turn warm. And through the window came a soft, sweet smell of flowers. For a moment the broker was held there, without moving, for this smell of flowers belonged to... Miss Leslie, it was hers, and hers only. The smell seemed almost to make her stand there before him. The world of business grew smaller and smaller. And she was in the next room, twenty steps away. I'll do it now, said Maxwell, half aloud. I'll ask her now. I, I wonder why I didn't do it long ago. He rushed into the other room. He stopped beside the secretary. She looked up at him with a smile. Warm color came into her face, and her eyes were soft and kind. Maxwell's hands were still full of papers. Miss Leslie, he began quickly, I have only a moment. I want to say something in that moment. Uh, will you be my wife? I haven't had time to make love to you in the usual way, but I really do love you. Talk quick, please. I have to get back to my work. Oh, what are you talking about? cried the young lady. She rose to her feet and looked at him round-eyed. Don't you understand? said Maxwell. I want you to marry me. I love you, Miss Leslie. I wanted to tell you. So I took this moment when I wasn't too busy. But they're calling me now. Tell them to wait a minute, Pitcher. Won't you, Miss Leslie? The secretary acted very strangely. At first she seemed lost in surprise. Then... Tears began to run from her wondering eyes, and then she smiled through her tears, and one of her arms went around the broker's neck. I know now, she said softly. It's this business. It has put everything else out of your head. I was afraid at first. Don't you remember, Harvey? We were married last evening at eight in the little church around the corner. And that's our program for today. Listen again tomorrow to learn English through stories from around the world. I'm Jonathan Evans. And I'm Ashley Thompson. 